Revenge films. My husband likes to go mushroom and mountain vegetable picking when it becomes a season each year. This year, he was able to bring home a lot of expensive mushrooms. I usually hand out the mushrooms to my neighbors and friends as a nice gesture. One day, I had my friends over for lunch at my house. I gave them some mushrooms to take home with them. Please take this home with you as a gift. I'm sorry that I only have one mushroom per family. Wow, are those truffles? They're so expensive when you try to buy them at the supermarket. Are you sure that you want to hand these out? Yes, please take them home. My husband's uncle owns some land in the mountains, and my husband likes to go mushroom picking each year. Thank you so much. I'm going to use the mushroom for dinner tonight. I'm so excited to make something with this mushroom. I might cook it with some rice. I bet that'd be delicious. Yes, or soup. You're right, that'd be delicious too. I was happy to see my friends talk excitedly about how they were going to eat the mushrooms. But one of my friends, Karen, remained quiet the entire time. Can we have our mushrooms to take home? I can't make anything decent with one mushroom. Karen, aren't you being rude? These mushrooms are very expensive. You should be happy that they received one as a gift to take home. You can't make anything with one mushroom now. I have a big family. I'm sorry, Karen. I want to hand the remaining mushrooms to my neighbors so I don't have any leftovers. I'm also planning to hand some out of my relatives, so... You don't need to feel bad. We're happy that you thought of us. Karen, you should be more grateful. I didn't hand out the mushrooms so that my friends would think highly of me. I was a little shocked by Karen's attitude, though, because it was totally unexpected. In the end, my other two friends convinced Karen that she was wrong for asking me for more, and they all left my house after that. I'm sorry, we weren't planning to invite Karen today, but she kind of invited herself. I guess she found out about today from someone else. I can't believe how rude she was to you, though. It's not your fault. Don't worry about it. Thank you for having us over today. I had a nice time. After my friends left, I took two bags of mushrooms to hand out to my parents and relatives. Look how big the mushrooms are this year. Please thank Kevin for us. I will. Your father looks forward to eating the mushrooms each year. He told me last week that he couldn't wait to drink a beer with the mushrooms. I'm going to go see Kevin's parents now to give them some mushrooms as well. Thank you for stopping by. I left my parents' house and headed to my in-laws' house next. That's so thoughtful of you and Kevin. Actually, Kevin's father went mushroom picking as well this year, so we have plenty to go around. You should take the mushrooms home and enjoy them with Kevin. Oh, I see. I might just do that then. Thank you. I went home and started cooking with the mushrooms, but then I realized something. One entire bag of mushrooms was missing. I looked around the kitchen, but the bag was nowhere to be found. Someone then knocked violently on my front door. Open the door! You can hear me, can't you? I opened the door and let Karen into my house. Is something wrong, Karen? Do you know what you've done? My family and I ate the mushrooms that you gave me, and we all got sick. My family's dying because of you. But the mushrooms are not poisonous. It must be something else. What Karen was telling me wasn't making any sense. I rushed to a nearby hospital to see if mushroom poisoning was a possibility. May I ask for some professional advice on the possibilities of food poisoning? I gave my friends some non-poisonous mushrooms as a gift to take home with them, and one of them claims that their family members are dying because they ate the mushroom. Could something like that really happen? They must have eaten a poisonous mushroom. I see. So it wasn't the mushroom that I gave them then. Thank goodness. Did you take home the other bag of mushrooms? The mushrooms in that bag were poisonous. You should have had poisonous mushrooms lying around in your house. You're guilty of trying to kill my family. I was mad at you because you only gave me one mushroom to take home with me. You should have told us that you had poisonous mushrooms in your possession. That none of this would have happened. My husband brought home those mushrooms to give to his friend who wanted to use them for a lab experiment. That's why I put them in a separate bag. You shouldn't have taken them without my permission. How could I have known that? You should have warned me about the poisonous mushrooms. You stole the mushrooms from my house without my permission. Don't try to blame this on me. You committed a crime and this is your fault. Please calm down. This is a hospital. The patients are doing much better now and they're on their way to recovery. I'm so relieved to hear that because Karen here gave me the impression that they were dying. As we were talking about all this, Karen's in-laws arrived in the hospital. The doctor explained to them about the medical conditions of their son and grandchildren. Karen! Why would you steal mushrooms from your friend's house and then feed them to your family? What were you thinking? To be honest, I never liked you. This is a good time for you to get divorced from my son. This isn't my fault. You have to believe me. My friend here is the one that gave me the poisonous mushrooms. She was trying to kill me and my family. Don't blame this on your friend. We know that you stole the mushrooms from our house. Karen's mother-in-law was livid and slapped Karen in the face multiple times. Please stop. You're hurting me. Karen's husband and child remained in the hospital for a few more days, and after that, they were discharged. 
It was odd that Karen was the only one in her family that hadn't eaten the poisonous mushrooms. It turned out that she had sold the mushrooms that she had taken from my house. She kept a few mushrooms for her family and made them some wild mushroom rice. When Karen's husband found out about what she had done, he was furious. I can't believe that you tried to make money off the mushrooms that you stole from your friend's house! What were you thinking? And on top of that, you poisoned us! I can't stay married to a monster like you! I'm leaving you! Please don't leave me! What am I supposed to do without my family? Please forgive me! Do you realize the gravity of what you've done? You tricked your friend into thinking that she almost killed us! This is a result of your selfishness and greed! I'm so sorry about what I did. I promise never to do anything like that ever again. You shouldn't have done it in the first place. What you did is unforgivable. The doctors told us that it was a miracle that our son and I didn't die because of what you did. If we'd eaten more than we had, we would have died for sure. I'm going to raise our son on my own. You're not fit to be his mother. Please forgive me, honey. I feel really bad about what happened. I didn't know that the mushrooms were poisonous. Soon after that, Karen was arrested for her crimes of stealing and attempted murder. She was released and put on probation, but everyone in the neighborhood wanted nothing to do with her. I can't believe that you stole the mushroom and tried to make money off of them. And you almost killed your family, too. Why would you do such a thing? You shouldn't take someone's generosity for granted. It was a nice gesture and you ruined it. Your husband was smart to divorce you. People spread negative rumors about Karen she could no longer stay in town. My husband couldn't believe what Karen did with his mushrooms, and although it wasn't his fault, he felt pretty bad about the whole situation. He visited Karen's husband and son while they were still in the hospital and apologized to him about what had happened. My husband is a university professor and he had also planned to use the poisonous mushrooms for a lab experiment. He blamed himself because he felt responsible for what had happened to Karen's family. I assured him that none of this was his fault. We were both so happy to know that Karen's husband and son were discharged from the hospital. A few months later, I heard that Karen had moved back in with her parents. Somehow, everyone in that neighborhood knew about how she had tried to poison her husband and son, and she's not able to leave the house because of the rumors going around. She deserves to be punished, though. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more!